thank you, IMAX, for having me out. I'm Tom Murray, and um, I'm going to back up a few slides as soon as I figure out which is the backup button. I want to introduce myself with some of my older works so you kind of have a history of who I am. This is some of my pre-graduate work, work that I was doing in Florida. Um, pretty figurative work. Eh, you can kind of tell what it was, and, and through this work I was trying to teach myself. My older work, uh, As Nothing and Everything That's Called, and 495 A Gas. It doesn't quite all fit on the screen, but that's okay. Um, an earlier drawing. Working with, a lot of what I worked with was star charts. The idea of, of the way we try to figure things out. Not that I was trying to figure things out, but more that I wanted to uh, look at the way I that I tended to try to figure things out, that we use maps to understand where we're going, but a map certainly doesn't describe a place. Uh, this is my master's thesis work at the University of New Mexico. Looks totally different from my other work. Uh, this series keeps going, um, and each of these are paintings on canvas, and uh, this is a later work I did when Donna and I first got here to the valley. Did I do this here? I think I did this here. Maybe it was Florida. I'm not sure. Um, working with the idea of the f-stop on a camera. Uh, and then these works certainly I did here where I was taking uh, archetypal figures such as the Duende and the Madonna figure and putting them in different contexts. Trying to think what would happen if uh, Duende actually had a job instead of being a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. And then what if Madonna was working on her fifth, fifth child as this model is. So now we're getting to Strange Attractors in art. Strange Attractor is a, I almost said, oh I did, I hit the wrong button again, <laughs> is a chaos theory uh, button. It's a dynamic kind of equilibrium is called a strange attractor. The difference between an attractor and a strange attractor is that an attractor represents a state to which a system finally settles, while a strange attractor represents some kind of trajectory upon which a system runs from situation to situation without ever settling down. Now, during a hurricane, while you're in it, it's a strange attractor. You don't know what's going to be flying through the air. But, it, but in reality, a, a hurricane is an attractor. In other words, the Gulf of Mexico gets a little bit warm, a hurricane moves in, cools down the Gulf of Mexico, and, and soaks everybody else. So the idea that an attractor, for example, you have a small town, a new business moves in, uh, and then people adjust to that new business, that's an attractor. And then it stabilizes, the system stabilizes. So as artists, we deal with, we, we work for a while, we get bored, we introduce something new into our process, and, uh, and hopefully we stabilize after that. Now sometimes, as artists, we like to keep that going throw something into the mix that we have trouble dealing with, uh, something that is out of our control, that yields kind of new forms and a new language. That's called a strange attractor. This all I learned from, let's see if I can get it going. Oh, this is one of my undergraduate uh, professors at the University of South Florida. He liked to refer to this kind of thing, is before I heard the strange attractor word, as the bleeding heart of Jesus. In other words, in some faith, we look at the Jesus figure and we say, okay, there's Jesus and he's got... Uh, we're used to this kind of imagery, but I imagine somebody who's not familiar with the Catholic or Christian faith would look at this and say, the man has a cavity in his chest and his heart is there. And it's... Very strange. So, Jeff Kronsnoble introduced the idea when creating a work of art to introduce something from a different context. Um, let's, let's keep on going. So, I want to say, a friend of mine mentioned, well, Jackson Pollock 
Jackson Pollock is very chaotic. It's the idea that within his paintings we can see no imagery, nothing we can settle on. The work is always in motion. Uh, I would say though that uh, perhaps that's true in the beginning. Jackson Pollock learned to control his marks. So he introduced an attractor, that of splashing the paint, which unsettled certainly the art world, but unsettled a system of representation. After a while, he learned to control that, and within that picture frame, managed to, to create consistent paintings, consistent works of art. So I might refer to this as an attractor. Well, how about Robert Rauschenberg? Uh, Robert Rauschenberg laid in the Dada movement, uh, certainly brought a uh, new language to the art world. I met him one time when I was an undergraduate, and what do you say to somebody that's got two uh, retrospectives, one in the US and New York and one in Paris at the same time, right? So I'm standing in line and, and uh, I'm gonna flip, flip back. Standing in line to, to talk with him, and I got up to him and I said, you know, like a typical undergraduate, I just don't understand your work. And he responded very generously, I don't either. If you ever figure it out, let me know. I thought, wow, what a cool thing to say. So, uh, Jean Tingley was invited by the Museum of Modern Art in New York to build homage to New York. Uh, this was also along with Robert Rauschenberg. It was a sculpture designed to destroy itself. So it was designed, the beginning of it was not what it was going to be at the end and nobody knew what it was going to look like except that it would be destroyed.